Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 2 In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the LSAT Light Machine Gun. The gameplay that you're going to be seeing today is a little bit different than normal. You're going to see me using less attachments and, and variety and total quantity than normal. And you're going to see some hardcore kill confirmed gameplay because I feel that this is an excellent weapon for hardcore. But let's talk about the damage first. The LSAT deals 40 damage in close quarters combat, but drops off to 24 damage at a distance. Again, I would like to explain because I've got quite a few messages in my inbox. Box. The bullets don't drop or fall like they do in Battlefield, and the damage doesn't physically drop or fall, it just decreases. You do more damage up close than you do far away. It's kind of a balancing factor in this game. What that means for you is that depending on your range from the target, that could be either a 3 or 5 shot kill, that's 3 shots in close quarters combat, or 5 shots at a distance. It does have an intermediate damage of 33 between the ranges of 31 and 72 meters. What this means is that it is a very, very long range light machine gun. The enemy needs to be 31 meters away for it to be a 4 shot kill and 72 meters away for it to be a 5 shot kill which is a very very long range. Very rarely will you be shooting at anybody that's 72, 73, 74, 75 meters away. You're just not going to be running into that very often in this game. However, you will be running into the uh, 31 meter ranges in some of the larger maps. So it's basically a 3 to 4 shot kill just kind of depending on where you are and maybe a 5 shot kill if the enemy is very very far away. While this sounds very impressive, in the light machine gun class, it's still a medium range light machine gun. The MK48 is top of its class when it comes to range and damage over range because it just has this crazy, crazy long range on it. And the QBB is at the bottom of the class in close quarters combat or low range light machine guns. This one and the hammer fall nice and snugly in the middle. If you put a silencer on your weapon, you get 30% less range or your damage profile over that, chain, over that range is shifted by 30%. It does not move the actual damage numbers up and down, but it does change the ranges at which your damage will decrease. The LSAT has a nice and healthy 1.2x headshot multiplier, which uh, I've complained a lot about some of the guns that don't have. This one has 1.2x. This multiplier does not help you in close quarters combat because 1.2 times 40 is still 48, which is still a 3 shot kill. However, in your medium range combat, say 31 meters plus, it's 33 times 1.2, which puts it over the 4 shot kill into the 3 shot kill range. And lastly, over there at the very longest of ranges at 24, that moves it up to 25, so it goes from a 5 to a 4 shot kill. So anything outside of close quarters combat, headshots are going to be useful, and they're going to net you one less shot to kill, which is going to be important, killing enemies faster before they can have any extra time to shoot at you. I feel that this is an excellent light machine gun for hardcore mode, which is why I've included some hardcore gameplay in this one. It's almost always a one-shot kill, even through walls. The damage profile is such that it will not be a two-shot kill until after 71 meters, which is a very extreme range, and you're very, very rarely shooting at people outside that range. The damage is not as low as the QBB LSW. That one was rather low, so after it was done shooting through a wall, sometimes it would be a two-shot kill. This gun has a higher damage profile, though not as high as the MK48, and the standard very uh, strong wall penetrating power of all the light machine guns. So in hardcore mode, even when you're shooting through walls, most of the time it's going to be a one-shot kill. The other cool thing about this weapon in hardcore mode, which none of the other guns have as far as I'm aware of, is it has a built-in ammo counter. If you look down there in between the blue bullets and the base, and I would guess I could call it the middle bottom left-ish of the weapon, you'll see that it has a little red LED ammo counter that counts down from 100, because you have a 100 round magazine that lets you know exactly how many bullets are in your gun, and you don't have to play any sort of guesstimation games when you're doing hardcore, because when you do light machine guns in hardcore, sometimes you're wondering, like, do I have 60 rounds left, or do I have 25? Because that can make the difference between life and death if you run into a large group of enemies. You won't have that problem with the LSAT, you can just check your little ammo counter and see exactly how you're doing. As I mentioned before, this weapon has the same excellent wall penetrating powers as the other light machine guns, and the damage is comparable, so it will be able to shoot through walls very, very well. It makes an excellent weapon to pair with FMJ, because when you put FMJ on, your ability to shoot through walls is even better. It does not increase the damage, but it makes all the walls in the game kind of like paper. You can just spray through them. Very, very good wall penetration. Always consider FMJ. And also, like the rest of the light machine guns, you get a negative 10% movement speed. The LSAT will make you run slower than just about anything else in the game. So please bear in mind, if you hate moving slow, you might not like this weapon, but if you like this weapon and want to move a little bit faster, lightweight will help you. As many of the stats on this weapon are squarely in between the MK48 and QBB, this is no exception. The RPM is 750, which is slower than the QBB, faster than the MK48, and this is the exact same speed that the PDW submachine gun shoots at. 
Previously, I've been reporting this at 720. It shoots at 720 on console, shoots at 750 on PC if you do the settings right. That's coming in a future in-depth, uh, why these frame rates, uh, not frame rates, rates of fire are so funny. But it shoots at the same speed as the PDW, and it has low to medium recoil at this rate. I almost wanted to put it at low, but sometimes when I full-on hose people, it kicks up a little bit. Overall, it is a very controllable light machine gun up to a medium range, and if you shoot it in burst, it should be very easy to control even at long range. The recoil is really not problematic. If for some reason you've decided that that rate of fire isn't good enough and you put rapid fire on your weapon, that's going to increase your RPM up to 1000. However, you're also going to get negative 55% range or, you know, negative 55% damage over range. It's going to shift your curve back and you will also get more kick. You will not only get more kick because your weapon shoots faster and kicks more, but it decreases the center speed on your weapon, which we've talked about a lot in the foregrip episodes, and that's going to decrease your return to center time, overall recoil, along with the added rate of fire. It's going to make it much, much more difficult to control. Also, like the other light machine guns, the hip fire on this weapon is rather poor. I tried to avoid the hip fire. It's doable. It's not quite as struggling as the MK48's hip fire because it shoots faster. The QBB has some entirely doable hip fire just because it shoots really fast. This one struggles. I hip fire my MSMC and PDW submachine guns a lot, even though they have the same rate of fire and overall bullet output, but their cone is much tighter. Their hip fire box, this one has a very, very wide hip fire box, and hip fire is going to be entirely entirely dependent on luck, my recommendation is that you avoid it when possible. The overall time to kill on the LSAT is quite fast. I like to think of this as the heavy version of the PDW or MSMC uh, submachine guns. They kill pretty fast, this weapon kills pretty fast. 750 RPM is a nice hefty rate of fire for light machine guns, for assault rifles, for some of the submachine guns. It's a 3 shot kill. It retains a 3 to 4 shot kill over a very, very long range. So I'm going to say this is a fast killing light machine gun. Even though it's got properties in between the MK48 and the QBB, it overall has a faster time to kill than either of them because the damage profile and shots to kill anyway and the overall RPM match up very very well with time to kill calculations. For once, I'm going to say that I like the iron sights on this weapon. Usually this is the cop-out portion of in-depth where I say, well, the iron sights aren't the best in the world, but I can use them and they're okay. That's because if you say you don't like the iron sights on a particular weapon, even though I know this is in-depth and I try to be objective, that's a very subjective thing, you're always going to end up offending quite a few people that do like the iron sights, but in this case, I rather did like the LSAT iron sights. I didn't necessarily need optics on it. I preferred optics. Of all of them, I just preferred the standard EOTech, but the iron sights are good, entirely doable. They're really, really nice and clean if I if you use a silencer because that'll reduce the muzzle flash and the bright flash, which is the bright flash at the end of the gun. It helps you track your targets e easier, even though it may add a little bit of recoil to your weapon. I can totally do this, so optics are optional. The aim down sights in and out time, 0.45 seconds for both. This is standard for the light machine gun class. Also standard for the light machine gun class is brutally slow reloading time. It takes seven whole seconds to go through the animation to reload this weapon, and the reload cancel time is 4.80 seconds, which is just, it's almost five seconds anytime you want to reload this weapon. Very, very slow. When you do need to reload, you need to be in a very safe place, very well hidden, and have a lot of spare time. You might as well just eat a Snickers while you wait. Magazine size is 100. Extended mags will take you up to 125. This is the same as the MK48, and it's one of the larger uh, magazine or box mag or whatever you want to call it. Uh, light machine guns in this game. Plenty of ammo to spare. Don't feel bad at all about throwing it down range. Extended mags, not particularly useful. I mean, what's the difference between 100 and 125? And extended mags makes you reload slower, which really, really scares me on this weapon. When it comes to how I would describe this weapon and how I think it's best used, I think this is like the PDW of the LMG class. It's a very good all-purpose weapon. However, the downside to that is that it lacks a specialty. This is both its strength and its weakness. It is such a general-purpose weapon that it does not have a specialty. It doesn't have a niche to fill. It, you can't, um, it's not a high fire rate light machine gun. It's not a high damage light machine gun. It's not a high accuracy light machine gun. It's not a high reload light machine gun. It's not a high anything light machine gun, but it's also not a weak anything. It has a good time to kill. The damage is solid. Wall penetration is solid. RPM good. Hip fire normal. Everything is fairly middle class about it, although I'd like to say it is slightly better than average just because of the time to kill calculations will net you a fast time to kill. 
and because of that I believe that this weapon is best used with only one attachment and tons of perks and tacticals maybe I'm just getting lazy on the class building but the way I used it and the way that I had the best results from it was I would either just run the EOTech site or I would run just FMJ on it or just the silencer or just one attachment on my light machine gun or you know maybe something like just quick draw which was also pretty good and then I would load up with lots more perks a secondary weapon tactical grenades lethal grenades uh, secondary weapon with attachments if you use this light machine gun it frees up a lot of uh, free slots the other light machine guns I typically recommended more attachments on or more specialized class this one fits almost anything it's kind of like how I recommended using the MTAR with little to no attachments this one does the same thing it performs excellently just as a stock weapon with nothing on it and it's good to go and I think that's the strength of the weapon because it's so general purpose you don't need a lot of attachments to make it good well guys, that's all for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out the previous episode on Hardline, which is a little more complicated than I thought it was, you can click the box on the left, it'll open in a new window. If you'd like to check out the next episode, which is going to be on the Hammer Light Machine Gun, you can click that box, it'll also open in a, light mach in, in a new window, and a Light Machine Gun. Crazy. And uh, hopefully I can get that done in a day or two. A lot of people, I've been uploading in-depth every day, and many of you have asked me why I didn't upload one yesterday. That's because the gun reviews take longer to master the gun, to level up, to get the clips and footage and whatever. But I do try to get them up. As always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.